All right, good evening everyone. Welcome to this webinar on the introduction to short selling. I'm Adam Koo and in this webinar, I'm going to show you how we as professional traders profit from a declining market or declining stock. And more importantly, how you can do the same thing in a very low risk consistent way. Good. So let's get started, right? And let's begin by understanding what is short selling or we call it in as professional traders, we call it shorting the market or shorting the stock, right? So before we talk about short selling, um, let's talk about going long first, right? So most people, they know how to make money when a stock goes up in price, when an asset goes up in price. So typically, uh, we understand the basic concept that, for example, I got a stock that's selling at $10, right? And I believe for some reason, the price is going to go up. So what do I do? I want to buy it at $10. So we call this buying. So I'm going to click and put a buy. Uh, we call this buy to open. Because you're buying to open a position. So when you buy at $10, that's a debit, right? So it's minus $10 debit on your account. So say the price goes up as you anticipate and the price goes to $20, for example, and you decide for some reason to take profit. So what do you do? You sell that stock. So you sell to close the position. Okay, so when you sell, you get a credit of $20. So debit $10, credit $20 per share. So net net, what's your profit per share? Your profit will be, that's right, $10. So this is something that everyone understands. It's pretty common sense, right? So buy low, sell high, or buy high, sell higher, right? So what do we call this? We call this going long on the market, or going long on a stock. Going long, right? Great. So what a lot of people don't realize is that you can make money just as simply when the price goes down. All right. So here's the formal definition. Short selling is a process of selling an asset that you do not own at a higher price in the expectation of buying it back at a lower price. So let's take a look at a typical example. All right. So, for example, this is the stock called Capital Land, right? And it's selling at this point of time at $4.20. As you can see. So, say for some reason you believe that the price is going to go down. And again, later on we'll explore and to find out how do we know a company's stock price is likely to go down, right? We're going to cover that in a while, right? Anyway, so if you believe it's going to go down, what you do? You will sell capital land at 420 all right now question some people would ask this how can i sell it if i don't own it how can i sell something that i don't own yes you can we call that short selling so basically what happens is when you click sell the broker would lend you the shares all right so for example i click sell the broker would lend me the shares and i'll sell it at four dollars and twenty cents so I'm selling to open a position. So we call that sell to open. Now, when I sell, what happens? I get a credit, right? I get a credit of $4.20 in my account. Plus $4.20 when I sell it over here. So the question is, can I then take that $4.20 and run? No, I can't, right? Because I bought the shares from the broker and I sold it. So I have to return it back to the broker, okay? So how do I return it to the broker when I've sold it? Well, the answer is I've got to buy it back and I've got to buy it back and return it to the broker. So hopefully I buy it back at a lower price. So sure enough, a couple of uh, months or weeks later, the price goes down, all right? To say $2.30. So I think for some reason that that's the bottom. What do I do? I buy it back. From the market so when I buy it back it it's a debit it cost me money to buy so it cost me 230 so it's minus 230 
right? So I credit, I debit, what's the difference? The difference is 190. Oops. There you go, right? So I made $1.90 profit out of an initial $4.20. So that's a 45% return. So we call this going short, all right? And you can see it's the complete opposite of going long. It's the same thing. The difference when you go long, you debit first and you credit. When you go short, you credit, then you debit. Does that make sense? All right, so that's basically short selling. Now, um, I've explained this, you know, thousands of times over the years, and some people still don't get it. They say, how, how can I borrow a shares and sell it when I don't own it, all right? So here's a, here's a metaphor. Let's imagine... Uh, your friend owns a house, okay? And your friend is going on vacation for two years. And he says to you, can you look after my house, All right? You can do whatever you want with it. You can stay in the house. You can do whatever you want. But just look after it for me. When I come home after my vacation, have the house there. And you say, fine, great. So your friend goes on vacation, okay? Now, at that point of time, you feel that the, the real estate market, the property market is going to crash. Okay, and you get a valuation, your friend's house is one million dollars right now. Okay, and you believe that uh, the price is going to go down because of the coming uh, uh, property crash. So, what do you do? You sell your friend's house. Okay, so when you sell your friend's house at one million, what do you get? That's right, you get a million dollars. Right? Okay, now can you take that money and run? No, you can't because you have to return the house to your friend. So how do you return the house? You sold it, right? Well, you gotta buy it back before your friend comes home from vacation. So sure enough, after you sell it, you wait for a few months, okay, and say the property market crashes and now it's worth half a million dollars. What do you do? You quickly buy that property back. So when you buy it back, it costs you 500,000 to buy the property back, right? But you already have a million. So you just have to take 500,000 out of the million which you got. So what's the net profit? The net profit is 500,000. So after you buy the property back and your friend comes home from vacation, you say, hey, here's your property, right? So does your friend care what you did in the meantime? Well, no, he doesn't, as long as he gets his property back. So in the meantime, you made half a million dollars by borrowing, selling, buying back his house. Make sense? So it's the exact same thing in the stock market. The only difference is we can do it any time that we want, okay? So again, let's go into more specifics of how it works. So how do you short sell a stock? Well, there are a few ways. The first method is to sell the shares directly. You sell the underlying stock. And you can do this in basically any developed market, in the Singapore stock market, in the US markets, in Hong Kong markets, right? You can't do it in Malaysia. You can't do it in Indonesia, but you can do it in most uh, developed markets like Japan, and Hong Kong, and the US, and Singapore, no problem, right? So how does it work? Again, when you do a short sell, you borrow shares from the broker, right? So your broker uh, basically borrows the shares on your behalf from other investors who lend their shares out. You then sell the borrowed shares. So you're probably thinking, um, how did a broker get the shares to lend it to me? Well, it's because other investors lent it to the broker and the broker lends it to you, okay? So again, subsequently, you have to buy the shares back at a lower price to return to the lender. Now, of course, nothing's free in life. When you borrow the shares to sell, you have to pay a borrowing fee. Now, what's the borrowing fee? It all depends on the popularity of that stock. So you have to check with the broker the borrowing fee before you borrow to sell. So over here, you can see a screenshot from one of the brokers I use, which is uh, Think or Swim. Sorry, not Think or Swim. It's Interactive Brokers. Okay. <clears throat> so you can see that um, for these particular stocks listed over here, this is the uh, borrowing fee. So you can see it varies from 0.12% to 1.4% to 2% to 8%, right? So it's a wide range. So usually when I short sell a stock, I want to make sure that the, the borrowing fee I pay is not more than 3% a year. You know, more than 3% a year, I'm not interested. 
Okay, so again, the borrowing fee is three percent per annum. Okay, why? Because I know I can make a lot more than that in terms of profits than the interest I'm gonna pay. Now, at the same time, did you also know that if you own shares, if you bought and own shares, and you're holding the shares for the long term, you're earning dividends from it. For example, right? Did you also know that you can participate in a share lending program? In other words. If you own shares, you could tell the broker, hey, I'm willing to lend you my shares to lend it to people who want a short sale. Okay? And by lending your shares, you receive the lending fees on top of your dividends. So this gives you extra income. So this makes sense if you are a long-term investor in certain stocks that you're going to hold for the long term, you can lend it to people to short sell it. Okay? And anytime you want to get it back, you want to sell the shares, no worries. You can just get it back anytime. There's no restriction, right? Um, and again, you can do it in the US market, in the Singapore market, so most developed markets. Now, I'm from Singapore, right? So, for example, in the Singapore Stock Exchange, you could go to this uh, SGX website, the Singapore Stock Exchange website, and you can take a look at the different stocks which you can lend to people who want to short it. And this is the lending rate. Right, so if you lend your shares to the broker, you get extra 4% per annum when your shares are lent out. Now in Singapore, if you want to borrow shares to short, it costs 6%, which is really, really high. And that's why for Singapore, I do not short sell using the, the actual underlying stocks. It's too expensive. I use other methods, which I'm going to show you in a short while. Okay, I've got a question. Someone's asking, okay, is there a time limit when I short sell, is there a time limit that I must buy the shares back? No, there's no time limit at all, all right, in the US markets. Uh, in other words, if you short sell at $10, okay, you can buy it back in 20 years or 30 years. Right? There's no time limit, right? But the thing is that the longer you take to buy it back and to return the shares, the more interest you are charged by the broker, right? But there's no time limit, okay? Okay, cool. So let's move on. Now, next question would be, okay, why, why learn to short sell? You know, um, we can make money as the price goes up. Why make money when the price goes down? Well, the reason is this, okay? Now, I'm the kind of person, I'm a professional trader, right? So I want to make money every single year. And I want to make money every single month. And the only way to make money every single year and every single month is... If you know how to make money, whether the market goes up or the market goes down. Because the market doesn't go up every month. The market doesn't go up every year. There are certain years when the market will crash. During a recession, the market could go down for three years in a row. There are certain months where the market may crash because of Brexit or some bad news. All right? So if you only know how to make money when the price goes up, you can only make money on certain years. You can only make money on certain months. But if you can short sell and you can make money when it's going up, you make money every single year once you learn the strategies. Okay? So you generate profits under all market conditions, both uptrends, downtrends, every single year. Okay? And again, you generate profits during bear markets. Bear markets are when the market is on a big downtrend during a recession. So, take a look at the S&P 500 index. So, this um, represents the U.S. stock market, all right? And this is over a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is about a 15 to 16 year period. So, you can see that during these 16 years, the market doesn't go up in a straight line, right? So, the market uh, has times when it's on an uptrend. There's an uptrend over there. This is a downtrend. There's an uptrend, there's a downtrend. So one of the things that we do in Wealth Academy, we spend a lot of time doing is learning how to identify the trend very accurately. And how do you identify when a trend changes direction from a downtrend to an uptrend? Okay?
So you can see it's an uptrend, a downtrend, an uptrend, a downtrend, an uptrend. So if you only make money when a price goes up, what happens? Yes, you could have made money during these two years. So from here to there, it's a 107% return. From here to there, it's 104% return over five years. And from the bottom to the top, it's 307% over seven years. Okay, so if you only go long, what's your total return over that 16 year period? 518%. Okay, so that when the market went down over here for two years and over here for two years, you're not making money. All right, so what are you going to do if you're a professional investor? You're going to starve to death, right? No money to feed your family, right? But if you know how to short sell, what happens? Okay. As it goes down 51%, uh, you're making money because you would short sell here and you buy back here. You make 51%. When the market goes down here, you, you make 55%. So if you profit from both the longs and the shorts, right, 51% here, 55% here, and that becomes a profit from short selling, your total return increases, right? So you double your opportunities when you can short sell. Okay. Now, another reason to short sell is this, that even during an uptrend, even when a stock is on an uptrend, it doesn't go up in a straight line like that, as you know. All right. Stocks and markets will go through what we call an impulse retracement. Impulse retracement. Impulse retracement. Kind of like a wave pattern. All right. It's kind of like breathing in and out, right? So you've got to breathe out. You gotta breathe in before breathing out. So oftentimes, before a stock goes higher, it has to pull back first before moving forward. All right. So on an uptrend, as you can see, this is Apple on an uptrend. Uh, it goes up and it goes through a dip or a retracement, up retracement, up retracement. Right. So again, uh, most amateurs they may only know how to make money. Right. They buy it over here. They sell it over here, right? They make the profit here. But what happens, right? Over here, they lose all that profit. Possibly they could lose that profit, right? Now, of course, you could buy and just hold it uh, for the long term. You could make money, right? But what if you could also make money during this period? Okay? During the retracement. So at this point, when it gets too high, you short sell and you buy it back over here before the uptrend continues. We call this counter trend trading. So you could also generate small profits along the way of an uptrend during temporary corrections or dips. Okay. Another reason to learn to sell short is to profit from lousy companies. Now, here's the thing. In the US, there are 7,000 companies, 7,000 companies, okay? Uh, in Singapore, there are probably about 800 companies, for example, you know. Now, question, are all the companies good companies? Are all the companies making money? No. In fact, I can tell you that most companies don't make money consistently. Most companies lose money. So if you only know how to make money from companies that are going up, you only focus on a small percentage of the companies. But if you can profit from lousy companies that are losing money, they're collapsing, going bankrupt, if you can make money from them, again, your opportunities are so much more, right? And every day there are companies that are losing money, declining profits, they've got scandals, you know, industry recession, you know, the boss had an affair with the secretary, you know, he's selling his shares, and the company's collapsing, you gotta make money as it goes down. For example, Groupon is such a company, right? When it started, it, it was a great company. But over time, what happened? They lost market share. You are sort of a sustainable business model. They were losing money, okay? And if you were smart and could read the financial reports, you know that this company will get less valuable over time, right? And so it was at $8.50, somewhere around here. So if you could do a short sale, and it collapsed to $2, 
how much money you make. You make a lot of money, right? It's a 73% decline, which means by short selling, you actually get a 73% gain in profits, right? It's a complete opposite, okay? So again, why do we learn to short? Remember that, you know, most amateurs out there, they don't know how to short and they're afraid of it. But professional traders like me, we love shorting. And we profit whether the market goes up or the market goes down, we don't care. We make money either way. Here's the best part. Stocks tend to go down much faster than they go up. Okay? That's why there's a saying that says, the bulls climb the stairs. The best jump out the window. Right? So when you short sell, you find that you can make profits faster than when the stock goes up slowly. All right? So if you take a look, get a look at Apple Computer, all right, it went from $400 to $680. That's a 70% gain. And then what happens? What goes up must come down. And from $680, boom, went down to $380. So now if you're like most uh, investors who are not trained in the markets, what happened? They buy at $400. They see it goes to $680. They are so happy. And the next thing they know, it goes back to $380 and they lose money. Right? Most people are like that, right? They buy a stock, it goes up, they are so happy, the next thing they know, all the profit disappears. Why? Because they don't have a strategy of when to buy, when to sell, and how to manage their risk. That's why the average person will always lose money in the stock market. Always, because they don't have a strategy or system. Now, if you're a smart investor, you'd buy at 400 and you exit at 680 or whatever it is, right? And you make 70%. And you get out before the crash. Right, not bad, make 70 70%. But if you are a really smart trader, not only would you make 70%, but you would short sell as it goes down, which means this 45% decline would be a 45% gain, which means your total profit would be 70% plus 45%. So isn't it better to learn to short as well as to go long? Okay, now, for all of you who are listening in, I'd like to ask you a question, okay? Um, have you ever lost money buying stocks before? Can I have some response? Those of you who have lost money buying stocks before, please say yes. I'd like to, you know, take a look. Oh, I've got a lot of yeses, right, great, good. Now, I want you to think of all those times when you bought a stock in the past, and after you bought it, it went down. It went down and you lost money. Think of all the money you lost. Now, think, if you had learned how to short sell, and all those times instead of buying, you short sold it instead, what would have happened? All your losses that you made would have been profits instead. So in other words, if you lost 25% in the past, that would have been a gain of 25% if you had shorted the stock instead. Think about that, all right? So in fact, that, that is what got me really excited to learn about short selling uh, many years ago, okay? <clears throat> Let me show you one extreme example. Now I'm sure you've heard of the, um, <clears throat> the great financial crisis, the subprime mortgage crisis, right? This was back, um, started October 07, to February 2009. And during this financial crisis, the stock market had the biggest crash for since the Great Depression, and the market actually crashed 55% during that um, two-year period, okay? And I'm sure you would have heard that, you know, a lot of people lost a lot of money, right? Retirees lost money, bankers lost money, Lehman Brothers went bankrupt, AIG almost went bankrupt, they lost billions of dollars, billions of dollars, right? And a lot of people ask me, they say, Adam, how does the money disappear? Right? They lost all the money, right? How did it disappear? Where did the money go? The answer is all the money that was gone from those who bought was transferred to those who shorted the market. Remember that every time you lose money in the stock market, the money did not disappear. It went to someone else. Okay? It went to the person who shorted the stock. So, those people who didn't know how to short the market lost billions of dollars. But those people who shorted the market, for example, Mr. John Paulson, right, famously made 18 
billion dollars in two years by short selling the stock market. And Michael Burry, who's famously uh, shown on the Big Short, the movie The Big Short, he made five billion dollars as the market collapsed. All right. So why would you want to lose money when you could be making money? All right. The only reason is you don't know how. But don't worry. In this webinar, I'm going to teach you how it's done. Okay. Now, another reason why <clears throat> it's very important to learn how to short sell right now is because I can tell you that from experience and from logic, we're going to have another coming financial crisis. Okay, why? Very simple. Okay. Now, the last financial crisis happened in October 07. Okay. Um, there, there was a crisis. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. Is that the last crisis or the last recession that we will see? No. In fact, if you look at history, there's always a market crash every 8 to 10 years. Every 8 to 10 years, there will always be a crash. Okay? Which means if you are 20 years old or 30 years old, you will see 6 to 7 more crashes in your lifetime. If you are 40, 50 or 60 years old, you will see at least 3 more crashes in your lifetime. Right. Now, many people, what happens when the market crashes? They lose their jobs, right? They get a pay cut or the value of their retirement disappears, okay? Or they lose a lot of money. That's why they're so afraid of recessions. They're so afraid of crisis. But I'm here to tell you the good news, that when you learn how to short sell the right way, which is what I'm going to teach you in Wealth Academy, you have no more fear of the coming recession. You have no more fear of the coming crash because when it happens, not only will you not lose money because I'm going to teach you how to get out when it happens, but how do you make money as it collapses? Okay. Now, no one can predict the future. I've got no idea when the next crash is going to happen. But I can tell you from statistics and from market cycles and from logic that it will happen soon. Why? Because the last crash was in 2007 and now we are currently in 2017 it's been 10 years since the last crash so i can tell you that in the next few months or at the very most the next one or two years we'll have another financial crash so the good news is once you learn this you're going to profit from this crisis now i also believe that there's going to be a coming financial crash not just because of the 10-year timing but also for a few reasons. Let me explain to you what I mean. Okay. Um, first of all, let me just draw something here. Okay. Now, some of you will know that markets move in cycles, right? So what goes up must come down. What goes down must go up. What goes up must come down, right? Cycles. These are cycles. Okay. Now, what is very important to know is when is the market near the top of the cycle okay and when is it near the bottom of the cycle is that important to know that's very important okay so one way to know is looking at the index PE ratio let me repeat that looking at the index the index PE ratio okay now, what does PE stands for? P stands for price. Okay, price. That means the price of the stocks or the price of the market divided by the earnings of the companies or the profits of the companies. Okay. Now, when the market is at the top of the cycle, that means it's at a bubble, right? Prices are very what? High. Right, prices are very high, they're in overinflated relative to the company's earnings. So, in other words, when the market is near the top, the PE ratio is very, very high. That's how we know it's near the top. Okay, now when the market is near the bottom of the cycle, that means after the crash, prices are very low, all right, because no one dares to buy, so the price is very low relative to the earnings so pe is very low at the bottom of the cycle right 
So the next question you would ask is, what is high and what is low? What's considered high, what's considered low, right? Well, good question. So to answer the question, let's take a look at history. Okay, now this is the S&P 500 or the US market uh, over the last uh, couple of years. All right, you can see this is over a 10 year period. Okay, and over here, you can see this is the PE ratio. Okay, the price to earnings ratio. Okay, now you can see that this is the market top market top so normally when a market reaches the top what happens is too expensive it will crash too expensive it will crash right then when it's very cheap it will rebound when it's very cheap you'll rebound okay so you can see that based on the last 10 years when the market was at the top at the top what was the pe ratio it was in this case it was about 20 and over here it was about 23 okay so that tells you that when the PE ratio is at 23 or more it's at the top it's going to burst the bubble's going to burst all right and you can see that this was during the crash the PE ratio was 10 which means the market is at the bottom so where are we now okay are we near the top or are we near the bottom of the cycle well, to answer that question, you've got to go to Bloomberg, right? This is from Bloomberg, and you can see over here, the S&P 500, this is the latest figure. You can see the P-E ratio, this is the P-E ratio over here, is currently at 21. So in other words, the market is near the top, and that's why it's going to crash really soon. So you've got to learn how to short sell when it happens. You can't do it now because it's still going up. You never short sell while it's still going up because you can't predict when it's going to turn so the moment it turns you will know because i'm going to teach you exactly how to read trends and reversals of trends okay